of long COVID itself hasn't been firmly described. This is a, a brand new thing. And so one of the initiatives that I'm a part of is the Recover Initiative, which is really trying to define what is and isn't related to COVID. So first we have to understand the, the symptoms that people have afterwards, which ones are definitely related to the virus, which ones aren't, and then sort of divide it down into, you know, are there treatments that may help with one or some of those symptoms? And so we're still on the early side of things, but I, you know, if we look at the early evidence, um, it would suggest that there's maybe an anti-inflammatory process of naltrexone uh, at a very low dose, maybe uh, part of the benefit here. So where does this leave uh, the listener, and I'm sure we have many who have long COVID, or maybe they think they do, but where does it leave them now, not you know, years from now, not when all the studies come in, where does it leave them now? Absolutely.
This is KNX in depth with Rob Archer. I'm Charles Spell. President Biden made a pretty big promise when it comes to abortion rights. He said today if Democrats elect more senators and keep control of the House in the midterms, he would make abortion a top issue and sign a law that would make it legal across the country. Yeah, well, the president is trying to rally voters to side with Democrats in three weeks during midterms, even if the president don't get his way. Is it realistic that Congress is going to do this, legalize abortion? Tracy Pearson is an attorney and cultural and political analyst. Tracy, thanks for being with us. I mean, here's the problem with what the president said. Um, yeah, if more Democrats are elected, it makes it easier. But in order for something like this, a, a bill to get through Congress, both houses of Congress, to become law, the Senate would have to do away with its current filibuster rules, which, as I'm sure you know, uh, the president is having problems in his own party, Democrats, to be aligned with. Two in particular have said over and over that they will not vote to change the filibuster rules. So it kind of sounds like the sort of thing that a president understandably might say to get voters to the polls, but there's a promise he realistically can keep. Well, thank you for having me. It's great to be with you again. I, I, I don't think it's a promise. I think it's him asking for voters to turn out because it is realistic. Uh, they need about 52 senators or more to take control of the assembly. And looking at the polling over time, and that's really important to understand when it comes to midterms. You have to look at it over time. You can't look at it at it on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the picture is looking much rosier for the Democrats. Uh, they are looking at about a 64% chance of being able to control the Senate, and that's critical. Uh, it's important for Democratic voters to understand that they need to make uh, Senator Sinema and Senator Manchin irrelevant because they're holding the rest of the Democratic Party hostage. The question, I think, is, is more that is it realistic that you're going to elect enough? Let's say, let's say there's a, a, a blue wave that all the pollsters, and we elect a lot of Democrats. So there are enough Democrats that can be elected to overcome a filibuster and get such a bill through, uh, through the Senate part, of not even talking about the House at this point. I think it is something that can happen. I think that what we've determined is that when Democrats show up, they are able to, to pass the things that they need to pass and they're able to elect people. We've seen that in the past. One of the things that's troubling right now when it comes to polling is, well, two issues. The first is that the Dobbs decision has really thrown a wrench in our understanding of what might happen here. Uh, the, the predictions are based on historical uh, records and the Dobbs decision really impacted um, our ability to predict what may happen here. Uh, voter registrations have increased exponentially across the board in states where we see that there are abortion bans and near total bans, uh, among, uh, particularly it's among women voters. Uh, additionally, in many of these states, uh, it's looking down well, you know, like the and I know that that sounds a little bit like a some of the things that I'm doing to some sense that it's looking like a pop-up, that uh, these polls are not going to be clear, so it makes it look harder to be aligned with them, particularly in the country. Okay, so, uh, although it's interesting, we're going to talk about it more in our next segment, but there are other polls, which I'm sure you've seen, that indicate the opposite, that, that rather than things looking more rosy for Democrats, things might not be looking so rosy for Democrats, that because the economy has re-emerged, as it doesn't run away, as a major issue in the minds of voters, and voters are tending to blame the party in power, the Democrats, for the economy, that actually Republicans might emerge from the midterms in a better position than even the pollsters once thought. That's not accurate. I don't agree with you. Well, I don't agree with me. The, uh, it's not me. Well, I, I, well, I don't agree. I understand, but 